uh, James Adams. I'm the director of the Autism Research Program at Arizona State University. And for how long have you been studying the influence of nutritional interventions in autism? We've been looking at uh, the effect of uh, nutritional interventions for autism for about 15 years now through many different studies. And you published how many studies you said you've actually published in journals on this subject? Uh, we published over 30 um, articles on autism and many of those relate to the nutritional factors in children with autism. So what's the main thing you're trying to prove, okay. do you think, or, or you want to show or demonstrate? The main thing that we're investigating is to look at what are nutritional problems in children with autism and to look at what nutritional treatments and interventions can be most helpful to them. So most recently you just conducted another <coughs> study. Tell me a bit about that. It was over the course of a year. Yeah. We just uh, finished a major 12-month study where we looked at the effect of a combination of six different treatments, uh, nutritional and dietary interventions. And we were thrilled to find that um, over the course of one year, we can make a huge difference in the lives of children and adults. The, the, some of the highlights are the children in the treatment group gained seven points of uh, IQ. We found that over the course of 12 months, the non-treatment group gained only four months of development. They're developmentally delayed, but the treatment group, instead of gaining four months, gained 20 months of development. So we're very excited to see these major changes in intellectual function, in developmental ability, in language, and in social interaction. Um, from this combination of six different interventions. And there was the synthesis of the, the type of intervention. The six interventions were all along the realm of nutrition? Right. So the six major interventions that we looked at um, uh, included primarily the vitamin mineral supplement we developed at ASU, uh, essential fatty acids or fish oil, and a healthy gluten-free casein-free diet. Those were the three that were most important. There was also some benefit from digestive enzymes, from carnitine and from an Epsom salt bath. And this area of nutritional intervention is still kind of considered within the broader realm of biomedical or physiological intervention. Yeah, yeah I would say this is all uh, very appropriate nutritional biochemistry. We know that humans have to have vitamins and minerals. We know most people don't get enough from a normal diet. We have good evidence that children with autism need increased amounts of certain nutrients. So how do then do we speak to those who still hold back, questioning whether it's worth it to be intervening in the area of food and nutrition for autism, given the breadth of research, experience, knowledge that we have that it's worthwhile? Yeah, there's just a growing body of evidence. Uh, on our website, we have an article with uh, uh, which summarizes over 150 published scientific studies showing that these types of interventions are very beneficial. We have a growing number of studies showing their importance. We've done randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies, the gold standard. These are not instant cures, but these are beneficial for many children. No one intervention helps every child, but each one seemed to help quite a few of them. Right. Um... And how about the clinicians? If we have a moment to speak to clinicians that are getting interested, mm -hmm. more so in the role of nutrition, specialized diets, you know, that aspect of helping mm -hmm. this audience, how can we just encourage them to take it on even more, investigate, dig, and to use it as a part of their practice yeah. in helping? Yeah. I think that we see so clearly um, the benefit of, for example, a gluten-free, casein-free diet in many children, and we know increasingly the reasons why. We know now that many children with autism are lactose intolerant, so they have problems with milk. We know that um, dairy products and wheat products are common allergens, among the most common allergens, and so it's very reasonable to do a trial of removing them and to see what happens. Each child is different. We can't say it helps everyone, but in our studies we found about two-thirds of the families benefited from a healthy, gluten-free, casein-free diet. And we saw the benefits in just a few months. Right. And now, yesterday, we heard some further data from Dr. Can you... Navio. Navio. And he's doing some markers at the metabolic level, which takes sort of the observation and measurement of all this to another level, isn't it? Yeah. One of the exciting things about Bob Navio's work is he looked at over 500 different metabolites in children with autism before and after treating them. 
And what he found is that in both the younger children, ages three to 10, and the older individuals, ages 11 to 26, both groups benefited substantially. Their metabolism substantially improved, getting much closer to normal in many different areas. There were many different metabolic pathways that were impaired in both age groups, somewhat differently in the two age groups, which is interesting. Regardless, both groups saw major improvement in their metabolism, shifting them much closer to normal. I can imagine that a lot of parents may watch a video clip of you or read something and go, boy, I wish you would talk to my doctor and tell them that this special diet that I'm trying to do is, is worth it because I'm being told not to bother. Yeah. What are the couple things you might just say to them as far as encouragement or perhaps something that they might pass on to somebody else to help them open their ears as well? Yeah. Unfortunately, most physicians get minimal uh, training in nutrition, and that's very surprising, but that's unfortunately the reality. And so the great thing is that all the interventions that we're looking at, vitamin, mineral supplements, fish oil supplements, looking at a healthy gluten-free casein free diet, these can all be done without working with a physician, that you can do them with a knowledgeable nutritionist, or you can implement them on your own. And these are all things you can do that can really make a difference in your child's life. And you can still work with your physician in other ways. And it's even better if you have a skilled nutritionist to help you better determine what are the best treatments for you. But again, these are very safe interventions. Have you ever found it to be not worth it to go from not paying attention in this area to paying attention for a parent? Uh, we can't promise that any one nutritional intervention will help every child, but I will say in our last study, 85% of the families felt vitamin mineral supplement was beneficial to them, 89% felt fish oil was beneficial, about two-thirds felt that a healthy gluten-free, casein-free diet was beneficial. So no one treatment helps every child, but we're now knowing better what are the indicators that a treatment is likely to be beneficial. Right, right. I think that's where all the promise is, is in best practices and giving more strategies and mm -hmm. getting them started. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I appreciate Good. it. Thanks. Great.